2022 is going to be the best year for the MacBooks yet. Right now, if you want to buy a new MacBook, you have four options. You have the MacBook Air, which starts from $1,000 and comes with the Apple M1 chip. And then you have the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which starts from $1,300 and also comes with Apple's M1 chip. And then you have the big boys, the 14-inch and the 16-inch Pros, released in November of last year, which starts from $2,000 in the case of the 14-inch and $2,500 in the case of the 16-inch, but feature much more powerful M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. In 2022, the 14- and 16-inch models are set to remain unchanged, as Apple is not expected to release any new Pro chips, with reports that Apple has implemented a TikTok cycle, similar to Intel's from back in the day, where one year they would release an entirely new chip based on a smaller manufacturing process, while the following year they would release a more optimized version of that. In 2020, Apple released the M1. In 2021, they released the M1 Pro and M1 Max. And in 2022, they would be releasing the M2, which is the first reason to be excited for the 2022 MacBooks. While the M1 Pro and M1 Max focused on raw CPU and GPU performance, the M2 will be focusing on even more power efficiency. Back in November, I upgraded from my 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro to the new M1 Max 14-inch model. And although the performance was noticeably better and the new 120Hz Mini LED display was also a joy to look at, the battery life took a major hit. Apple claimed a 20-hour battery life on the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, and although I never got anywhere close to that, I did get around 10 hours of actual usage, which in my case ranges from web browsing to emailing to even some light Photoshop in Lightroom here and there. 10 hours of actual usage was something that I never experienced on any laptop before. But unfortunately, with my 14-inch M1 Max, with the exact same usage, I'm getting about 5 hours, literally half of what I used to. Apple claims a 17-hour battery life on the 14-inch model, but they actually fail to mention that the battery life is severely affected by which chip configuration you get. The M1 Max that I have has 32 GPU cores, more than double of what the base 14-inch model has. And while this does offer significantly better performance, it does also significantly impact the battery life. Well, this is where the M2 comes in. As power efficiency is said to be even further improved, the M2 chip would literally be the best laptop chip if you want a machine that can last you for an entire day. And not only that, but my 14-inch MacBook Pro that I've only had for the past three months is actually approaching the same number of battery cycles as my 13-inch M1 that I've had for way over a year now. So a more efficient chip also means a longer lasting battery in the long run. But wait, there's more. This M2 chip is also said to be offering more performance with higher clock CPU cores, as well as two extra GPU cores. And now I wanna give a shout out to Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video. If you have an older Mac, or even if you have the brand new 14 and 16 inch models, and you wanna make sure that they stay fast, then Clean My Mac X is the all-in-one tool that can do that. With Clean My Mac X, you can optimize your Mac by deleting unnecessary cache files, re-indexing Spotlight, repairing this permissions, completely removing every trace of an app, and so much more. Check out Clean My Mac X by using the link below. And now, back to the video. Now, there will be two new MacBooks that are set to be using this brand new M2 chip one of them being a brand new MacBook Pro, which is the second reason why I'm excited for the 2022 MacBooks. Now, because of the big price difference between the MacBook Air, which starts from $1,000, and the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which starts from $2,000, Apple still kept the 13-inch M1 uh, from $1,300. And this is actually the MacBook that is set to be updated. Mark Gurman reported that this will be getting the M2 chip, so we already knew about that, but what we didn't know was what would happen with the design. Would they keep the same 13-inch design, or would it be updated to the 14-inch MacBook Pro's design? Or would we get a completely new design altogether? But luckily, Leaker Dylan DKT, who's been crazy accurate in the past, also currently banned for a mysterious reason, posted a tweet back in January clarifying that the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro would be updated with a 14-inch M2 model that would not only share the exact same design as the $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro, but the same ports as well. And this is incredible, as people who wanted the 14-inch MacBook Pro, but uh, they couldn't afford spending $2,000 on the base model, now have the option to get it for way cheaper. But how cheap will this actually be? 
Well, the current model, 13HM1, starts from $1,300, and Dylan did state that this would receive a slight price increase. If I could guess, I would guess $1,399 or $1,499 in the worst case. $1,499 would make more sense though, as in this case, we would actually have an exact $500 price difference between all MacBook models. However, I do believe that his new 14-inch baseline Pro would need to cut some more corners aside from just the chip, as if it doesn't, who would actually pay $500 more just to get the M1 Pro chip? One that is more power hungry than uh, the M2 and only comes with two more CPU cores and four more GPU cores. I do believe this new model to also lack this beautiful 120Hz mini LED ProMotion display, which we all know is one of the most expensive components to go inside these new MacBook Pros. Yes, 120Hz is really nice to have and definitely noticeable coming from my 13-inch M1 model. And the mini LED itself is great for watching movies and working with HDR content, but if there is anything that can be cut to bring the price down by this much, then this display would have to be it. Oh, and the best part about this new MacBook Pro is that it would very likely have the best battery life in any MacBook before, thanks to the super power efficient M2 chip and the much larger battery when compared to something like the MacBook Air. Speaking of the MacBook Air, this is the third reason to be excited for the 2022 MacBooks. I've talked about this new Air in some of our previous videos, so most of you probably know what the main changes are. The biggest one being, of course, that redesign. Just like the MacBook Pros, this new Air will be an entirely new generation. In this case, the fourth generation Air. Oh, and it might even drop the Air name so that the MacBooks are more in line with the iPhone and the iMac naming scheme, with just two models, a standard and a Pro model. It is also rumored to drop the famous wedge-shaped design in favor for a flat design, one that will be much thinner than the current MacBook Pros, although it is unclear if this will be thinner than the old Air or not but it is rumored to come in multiple colors, similar to the 2021 M1 iMac. This will make the Air far more appealing to a younger and more casual audience. Oh, and the most controversial change by far is the white keyboard and the white bezels, and of course, that rumored presence of the notch. It is said to have two USB-C ports, one on each side, and just like the current gen Air, lack any sort of active cooling system. Which means that this new baseline 14-inch MacBook Pro would technically have even more performance than the new MacBook Air with the exact same M2 chip as the MacBook Pro will be actively cooled. On top of that, we have heard rumors that this new M2 chip would come in a binned version as well, with 9 GPU cores instead of 10, perfect for the entry-level model of this new MacBook Air. And to be honest, this new MacBook Air might actually be an even better choice for me than my M1 Max 14-inch MacBook Pro. The main reason why I got this 14-inch MacBook Pro as soon as it came out was because I wanted to be able to connect my two external monitors to it, which my M1 MacBook Pro did not support. The M2 chip inside the MacBook Air is set to remove that limitation, and in combination with the super thin form factor and the even better battery life, this new Air will be incredibly tempting. Regardless, 2021 was already one of the best years for the Mac, with a 28.3% growth compared to 2020 uh, that was mostly attributed to the M1 Macs, alongside the new MacBook Pro designs. Which is why 2022 is very likely going to be even better, as not only Apple will have new designs for all MacBook models, but it would also be running all of them on Apple's latest silicon. Oh, and if you want to see videos on all the other Macs that get updated, like uh, the iMac, the Mac Pro, and the Mac Mini, check out our previous videos right here, and make sure to subscribe for more Leaks and Rumors episodes. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.